Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the 12th edition of the Orient Lodge Masons Teacher of the Year Banquet. If you would take your seats, please. Good evening, everybody. Oh, don't lean into it. You don't have to lean into it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. We have a long night ahead of us. We're going to start. Welcome to our 13th annual reception in honor of the nominees. nominees for the 2019 Norwood Teacher of the Year Award. My name is Roland Akel. I am the current master of Orient Lodge of free and accepted masons of the 6th Masonic District. We, the members of Orient Lodge, are privileged to sponsor a remarkable event such as the Teacher of the Year. We must not forget to thank our brother the one and only Christopher Rogers, who <laughs> who, as you know, worked diligently to make this special occasion memorable to all. Thank you, Christopher. Another round of applause. <laughs> My friend, this by, by far is our largest ever class of teachers nominee. 51 teachers have been nominated for this year's award. That is the result of a collective outpouring of appreciation from parents, students, and colleagues for all that you do for our children, generation after generation after generation. To start any event, it is customary that we offer a prayer. I would like to introduce worshipful Robert Shedd, who will lead us in an invocation. At the conclusion of the invocation, please remain standing. Please rise. If you would be with me in the spirit of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity to be here this evening with our brothers, friends, teachers, and their families from Norwood. Please praise, pl please praise them for the, uh, the work that they do. Bless their hands, their hearts, and their minds for the work that they do educating the youth of today, which will become the future of our country tomorrow. I pray for the town of Norwood that they can come up with the funding needed mm -hmm. to keep the Willette School open and pay all of the teachers what's just due to them. Bless this food for our use and us to thine service. Amen. It is now my honor to introduce to you the District Deputy Grand Master of the 6th Masonic District, Right Worshipful Robert Vartanian, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and other things. Thank you, If you would assist me in pledging our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. <laughs> First off, Let's start off with a little fun. How about those Bruins? <laughs> and we hope the same for the Celtics this evening, and we won't talk about the Red Sox, although they're getting a little bit better. As the personal representative to the Grand Master of Masons in Massachusetts, Most Worshipful Paul Fulton Gleason, I welcome all of you and send his warmest fraternal greetings. I also extend greetings from all Masons from Norwood and Westwood. Massachusetts. Mas uh, Massachusetts Masons are the third oldest Masonic body in the world. Our members include most of our founding fathers, 
Brothers like George Washington, Paul Revere, and Joseph Warren have graced the halls of our Grand Lodge. Our ritual teaches us that a virtuous education starts with our own endeavors and the blessings of God. You represent to me the blessings of God. And I thank you on behalf of the families you impact every day for what you do to our future. Tonight represents a night of excellence, and I congratulate everyone here for being considered. I would also like to congratulate Orient Lodge for hosting once again for the 13th year, worshipful? 13th year, this wonderful event. I wish you all good luck and have a wonderful evening. Now I will turn the podium to the watchful Tom McClintock, who once again will serve as master of ceremony for the evening program. I hope you enjoy that memorable night. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. So a couple of housekeeping events. So Tom McClintock, um, this is my third year doing it. My responsibility to you is to make sure that nobody's boring and everybody keeps moving and, and, and that you are out of here with enough time to still do some socializing here and perhaps elsewhere in the evening. So, um, From a housekeeping standpoint, where are the restrooms? We have one downstairs, which is why we cannot rent the building out on a public event. Um, and then we also have a ladies' room and, and several other bathrooms on the main floor. And then we also have one on the fourth floor. So, But you don't need to go that far. Uh, safety notes. We do have exits. OK, uh, I'm a civilian volunteer on a search and rescue team. So safety is always one of the things you want to be thinking about. OK, so we have a fire. We have a fire. We have something that happens in the room. We do have exits. And they're well marked so that we have three doors out of this room. Um, we used to actually have a door here, but it went into an old coal room, and we were smart enough when we redid the room to just seal that baby off. So, so if you, and uh, if there's any questions on from an emergency standpoint, we do have a, an AED, and it's been checked and verified. Saddest thing, I don't know if you all saw in the news about three weeks ago, there was an event where some guy went down and they grabbed the AED. It was at a hotel, and the battery was dead. So sad. Yeah, we we don't want to see stuff like that happen. So. Um, this is intended to be an interact. Th this is intended to be an interactive evening. So if you want to get up, Elsie uh, is up at the bar. He's always willing to serve you another drink if you would like. <laughs> and, and and the buffet is yours. We really don't want to take any of it home. Okay, just please treat yourself. And if you're sharing photos on social media, uh, make sure they're appropriate. Uh, but use the, use the hashtag uh, 2019TOY as in Teacher of the Year. So we have quite a few people who are helping out tonight. We have a bunch of Masons around the room. Raise your hand if you're a Mason. There you go. So they're part of the people who help make this happen. Support crew, we have Michaela, who's with the Norwood Community Media Center under the tutelage of Jack Tolman. <laughs> So, uh, and my understanding is we actually do have uh, several principals here. Diane, and, and when I call your name, stand up. I know you think everybody knows you, but in the other schools, you're not so famous. <laughs> so, Diane Ferreira. <laughs> yeah, Ball School. <laughs> Don, <laughs> Diane, Diane Ferreira, Ball School. So, uh, Donna Brown Callahan. There you go. Margot Frizik, Coakley. <laughs> Brian Riley Prescott. There you go. Hugh Galligan, Norwood High. A fellow scouter, and this gentleman loves all of you. He only came to the town a few years ago, uh, David Thompson. Now, you'll notice I didn't give him a title. I'm thinking you all know who he is, what he does. So, school committee members, Maev Bodenhofer. There you go. And Teresa Stewart. Hey. 
So one of the things we've really been trying to do, one, one of the things about Freemasonry, you know, we'll, we'll accept any man who's willing to profess a belief in God and, and wants to be a man of good character. How they get there is part of what we do as an organization. So we're always trying to reach out inclusion, 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 inclusion. And I know all of you are used to that, inclusion, inclusion, inclusion. But we've been reaching out to the schools in town. And for the first year, we actually have representatives from Norwood Montessori. If you could stand, please. Norwood Montessori, there we go. So we have uh, teacher Michael Rohr and the director Tamika Porter, right? Thank you. So, so how, how are the selections made? It's actually, you know, every application comes in with a little paper clip and whatever the biggest bill attached to that paper clip. I mean, that's, that's really how we do it. Other than that, you know, because um, we seem to get a lot with nothing. Uh, we actually have uh, three, three of, two of the three jurors are here tonight. Sean Richardson, who was the 2007 Teacher of the Year winner. Sean? Oh, didn't make it. Okay. Ooh. I, I know where Sean lives. And, and Raina Freeman, who is uh, president for MassQ. Yay. And now we're going to go through in, uh, I'm going to go it in a different order than they have here. Past Teacher of the Year, our senior, Scott Maffey, 2011. And Dr. Michael Crowley, 2014. Laura Tolman, 2016. Cindy Durain, currently Vice Principal Noah High, 2017. And last year's winner, drum roll please, Joy Huey. So the good news is everybody walks away with something this evening, and it's not that you're getting a participation award. We really do like what you do, you know, that's what it is. So I uh, do want to thank our sponsors, Rebel Restaurants, the operators of Tamazcal Tequila Cantina, Cantina. Everybody gets something from them. We have a, a gift certificate for every nominee, and they also made a significant in-kind donation in the form of discounted gift cards for all nominees. So. Uh, Norwood Bank is sponsoring for the first year, so go put some money in Norwood Bank. And then we had, we had uh, contributions from uh, several of the brethren of Orient Lodge and also the Orient Lodge trustees. We have 51 nominees. Now, I gotta tell you, that's spectacular. That is, that's our largest number ever, but I think we can even do better in the future. So keep, keep putting, and remember, anybody can nominate. You can nominate other people. It's a conflict of interest if you nominate yourself, but you know, <laughs> if, if you look in the mirror in the morning and say, why not me, then. <laughs> so we have 51 nominees, again, including uh, Norwood Montessori and every Norwood public school. We know this year more than ever, it is important for our community to let you know how very much we appreciate what you do. And we were overwhelmed by the outpouring of appreciation for the educators. Here's the process we're using this evening. It's gonna be a little different than last year because in pre previous years we did, oh, two to three minutes per person. You do the math. If we do, hi Sarah. If we do two to three minutes per person, It'll be late, you know. My commitment to you is eight o'clock, the room's empty, you know. Or you can socialize, but the formal part of the evening is done by eight o'clock. So what we're gonna do is uh, the presenters will read the names of all the nominees from a particular school. You will all stand, those who were read, not all of you, those who were read will stand up and uh, we will have certificates uh, and the gift certificates from the restaurant uh, brought, and then you'll sit down and then the presenter will do a, a brief uh, a, um, excerpt from the essays that we received. Now, you each will receive copies of the essays, you know, so get your, get your tissue papers out when you go home, so. Um, we promise to keep it fast moving, so our presentations will be a bit, bit abbreviated, as I mentioned. In your program, you'll see we included short abstracts, and uh, we know you'll each enjoy the, uh, reading the amazing impact all of your colleagues have had. Our, our winner will be announced, when is the appropriate time? At the end of the night, right? So you have the announcement, give the check, 
by the way, we have two checks again. We have a check for the winner, a $1,000 check for the winner, and we have a check made out with the winner's name and the school. Because we, if you're a winner, we want you to influence what happens with the money, okay? So don't sign the check till you like what they're going to do with it, okay? <laughs> you think I'm kidding. Um, on, on a serious note, years ago, my company made a, a, a $1,500 don donation to the Oldham School. And, uh, and I said, I want my name on it. And they said, well, Tom, it will have to be taxable to you if we do that. I said, I don't care. And I went over to the school and I said, here's 1500 bucks. What are you going to do with it? And, and the long story, we came out with a science program that, that I enjoyed. And I said, OK, now I'll sign it. So at this point, David, it is uh, the superintendent of schools' turn to give us some words of wisdom. <laughs> into the mic, you say? All right, don't worry. I, I only have a, I'm going to blow your time thing here, Tom, because I'm only talking for three hours. So, okay. yeah. Are, are, <laughs> they said that short. Yeah, they did. <laughs> all right. uh, first of all, I want to thank the Masons uh, for hosting and running this event. It is truly uh, a fantastic event and really recognizes uh, the work that we do. And I want to thank you folks for doing that. Um, so we come together here to celebrate uh, these individuals here, Teachers of the Year nominees uh, for the town of Norwood. And, and you've heard me say it several times, how blessed I am as a superintendent to work with the quality of people that work in this district. And I've said several times, I've worked in several districts. I've never seen the amount of dedication, the passion you have for your kids, uh, and the genuine caring that you exhibit in our schools every day. So here we are today coming together to spend a few moments together to celebrate the best of the best, in my opinion. Um, I also want to thank the families, the spouses, the partners for their support, because we all know that teaching is not just a seven to two or a eight to three job as we're getting ready and spending Sunday nights uh, doing lesson plans and correcting papers, and you go on vacation and you have a bag full of things. Um, and you know, if you're really passionate about teaching, you bring it with you all the time. So I want to thank everyone for that. Um, you know, when I would teach uh, teacher preparation courses and mentor principals, I'd always ask people to take a few moments and think about their favorite teacher. Unfortunately, in this room, if we did that, we probably would be here for several days. But to take a few minutes and think about <clears throat> those special teachers that really made a difference in our lives. And there's usually about four things that are in common, no matter who you meet. Um, first is that, per and actually kind of reading through the bios, this comes through as well, is that personal connection and caring. If you're here, you've done that. There's a deep love for your subject, for your grade level, and for transferring and working with, with kids. And one thing about teaching, it's not just a job, it's a calling. You don't become a teacher, you don't become a great teacher unless it's a calling that you really care and are putting in the time to do that. You know, teachers that are special challenge students, uh, and they, they, they challenge them and they bring them to a place that makes a difference in their lives. Um, and you know, you cause significant growth in them as a person. That belief you have in your kids, that encouragement that you give them lives on. You know, the old saying, a teaching touch lives, touches lives, it's, it's very, very true. Um, <clears throat> so here we have 51 of the best and brightest in probably one of the best and brightest places to teach. So I want to congratulate all of you for, for being here. And it's a pleasure and honor to, to celebrate with you. Um, and I know you make a difference. And sometimes you don't even make a difference with a kid. And you meet them two or three years later, and, and you see that difference, and they greet you on the street. How many people have had someone come <coughs> running across the street during the summer, and this kid's yelling your name? Yeah, uh-huh, right. Because you touch the future, and you make a difference. And I want to thank you for that, and I want to take the time to recognize that. And with that, I will get back to the program. I didn't do too bad, Tom, huh? <laughs> All right, thank you. So our first presenter for the evening is Christine Girardi. All right, 
I am here to represent or talk about uh, the Little Mustangs Preschool Academy, the Willett Early Childhood Center, and Norb Montessori. Uh, from the Little Mustangs Preschool Academy, Lauren Grelish. Michelle McCarthy and Teresa Aello. From the Willet, Amy McKinsey, Ann Watson, Christina Jenkins. Colleen Reynolds, Meg Corcoran, me. Patricia Doucette, and from Norwood Montessori School, Michael Rohr. I'm just going to read a few notes from the nomination forms. These are the ones that I got the most choked up over, so I'm hopeful I'm going to get through this without crying. From Little Mustangs Preschool Academy, a parent said about Lauren Grealish, uh, her uh, effect on her child. Every day he comes home and is excited to share whatever he has learned with us from that day. I'm already choked up. <laughs> <laughs> she is extremely sweet and caring. You can tell she loves what she does and has a lot of pride and joy at school. When speaking with other parents, we all agree that Lauren is top notch and we are extremely lucky to have her as part of the Norwood Public School System. Mich Michelle McCarthy. The best words to describe Michelle McCarthy are kind, dedicated, enthusiastic, smart, creative, and positive. Miss Michelle, as her students call her, helps to promote the use of expressive language and to build comprehension skills through fun, playful, dramatic, and clearly effective strategies. Another great aspect of Michelle's professionalism is that she truly utilizes new approaches and shares strategies as she learns in professional development. Teresa, a parent said of Teresa, a Hello. I see your name right. In a classroom of mostly nonverbal children, she makes each child truly feel special and included. My son has flourished with the help of this teacher and looks forward to going to school every day. She comes up with ideas to meet each student's needs and interests at the same time. She knows how and when to push my son to do better and learn. Good, it gives me a, uh, I can breathe. Uh, from the Willet, Amy McKenzie, a parent said of Amy, Mrs. McKenzie has been a warm and wel welcoming presence in my daughter's life. She's dutifully organized and she's packed more academics into a classroom full of five and six year olds than I could have ever imagined. While doing that though, she's also promoting and fostering creativity and free time and play and blending them all. Ann Watson, she has the gift of making others feel like they're the only ones in the room. She oversees lunch for 70 children. She takes the time to help every student with his or her lunch, but more importantly, she takes the time to talk with them. Wait, she patiently listens to all of the stories about pet hamsters, a cousin's party, and when grandma's birthday is, and she does it with a smile. <laughs> Christina Jenkins. Great teachers develop strong relationships with their students and Mrs. Jenkins does just that. She is warm, enthusiastic, and caring. Her lessons are memorable and creative. My boys are still talking about the stone soup they made and friendship fruit salad. Colleen Reynolds. He, uh, my son had a tough time adjusting at the start of the school year, but within a few weeks he was excited to go to school and also excited to tell me all about what they learned and to show me all of the cool projects they made. I even catch him playing and pretending to be a teacher himself. She is great at effectively communicating her concerns and making you feel like there's plenty of help and options if you need it. I love that she took notice and wanted to help in any way she could. Meg, Mrs. Corcoran has made uh, what was beginning to look like a difficult year into an exciting one for my son. She is always so positive and upbeat when describing how the day went and always pulling a positive or putting a positive spin on everything. I can't imagine a better person to guide my son through the first year of formative school and prepare and excite him for a lifetime of learning. 
Patricia, Patty Toussaint has been a blessing to our family. Her years of experience are very apparent as she always seems to know exactly how I am feeling when I air concerns to her about my son and she always knows the right thing to say. We are blessed that our son hit the teacher lottery this year with Mrs. Doucette. She is by far a woman to be admired, revered, and showered with gratitude. <laughs> Nor <laughs> Montessori School, Michael Rohr. Meeting Dr. Mike, you immediately notice his calm and relaxed demeanor. He brings to life every day in his classroom and relationship with each of his students that all children are whole, not broken, and not less than, that all children are innately curious and hardwired to explore and learn, and it is his job to help uncover the gifts of each of his students. Spend any time with Mr. Mike, and it is clear that he loves his work, has an unwavering commitment to helping each student discover who they are and the potential they each have that already exists within them. Thank you. And now for the Callahan and Cleveland School, our own Quentin Blanchard. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be here doing this with you this evening. The first students, the first students, the first teachers I'm going to be reading are from the Callahan Elementary School. Kathleen Green. <laughs> who, by the way, was my daughter's fourth grade teacher. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jennifer Barr. Jill Wood, who, by the way, was my daughter's second grade teacher. Katie Lombranos, thank you. All right. Her. Michelle McAvoy. Sarah Ryan. Kathleen Breen, as I mentioned, was my daughter's fourth grade teacher. She generally cares for her students. She communicates concerns with parents and goes above and beyond her duties to ensure her students are successful. She empowers young students to be invested in their work and encourages all students to grow. Her teaching efforts have lasted long and it shows in all of their work. She deserves to be recognized and applauded for all her work. A few years ago, the incoming fourth grade class didn't have the same number of students and only two classes were needed for the fourth grade. The fifth grade class, however, was a little bit too large. So veteran fourth grade teacher Mrs. Breen rose to the occasion, not only to save another teacher from being laid off, but also to help alleviate the large fifth grade class. Mrs. Breen volunteered to move up to the fifth grade. It's not easy to pack up an entire classroom and teach a whole new curriculum, but Mrs. Breen did it for the good of the students. Mrs. Green. <laughs> Jennifer Barr, this parent, writes, this parent writes about Jennifer Barr. As a parent of a second grader in Mrs. Barr's classroom, I feel confident that my daughter has a well-rounded teacher who is looking out for her best interests. Whenever we get a chance to speak, she is always positive and upbeat about her students in the classroom even though I'm sure she has days where her students are challenging her patience. I was one of those students that did that. <laughs> I feel that the very start of each school year, she had a great grasp on the understanding of each student's personality and quickly picked up on the areas and their weaknesses and she needed to be, and that she needed to concentrate on. It takes, a strong person to take an ex to, it takes a strong person to take an extremely diverse group of students and get them all from point A to point D together as a unit. Um, Jennifer Barr. <laughs> Jill Wood. Mrs. Wood, like I said before, she's my daughter's second grade teacher. <laughs> Mrs. Wood has inspired my son to enjoy reading. She took the time to figure out that he needed reinforcement and speech to help with spelling, which was he wasn't able to do all that well. He struggled in his ear. She supported him through his fears and creative ways. She gives him extra math and recommends games to play at home to challenge him. 
She understands that com competition is a motivator for him and that that's how she keeps him engaged in learning. Another parent writes, teachers work hard and are often not thanked enough for all they do. Mrs. Wood, I hope you are recognized and appreciated for all you do and your current students each year and for your previous students. Your genuine love for children shines through everything that you do. Jill Wood. <laughs> Kate Lombrinos. Katie Lombrinos. Did I say that correct? Okay, great. Katie Lombrinos was part, put on this earth to be a first grade teacher. We are beyond fortunate to have her in our NOAA public schools. The knowledge, skill, and patience that exudes from her is above and beyond. She now has educated two of my children, and we will be forever grateful. She differentiates her instructions for her students, meeting individual needs and learning styles without any little person knowing she's doing it. Children are comfortable in her presence. Kate Lambrinos. <laughs> Michelle McAvoy. We are fortunate to have teachers like Michelle McAvoy within the Nord Public Schools. As a second grade teacher at the Callahan Elementary School, she helped and supported our family as we identified learning challenges for our child. She accommodated and supported him throughout the school year and assisted us as parents navigating the 504 process so that, her, so that our son could be specially supported within the areas of challenge as he moves from grade to grade. She does not just teach our children, she generally cares for each and every one of them. She goes above and beyond to make sure that each of the students feels they are being heard and appreciated. As parents, we are beyond grateful for her kind nature and her approach to learning. Michelle McAvoy. <laughs> Sarah Ryan. She teaches her classroom respect and to appreciate the difference in opinion, further encouraging them to mature. She does this with a smile on her face and a spring in her step. Every day, the growth of my son has been impressive this year. Mrs. Ryan creates an environment that is safe for them to speak for themselves and for others. Through our son, we've learned that kids work in groups, cheering on each other and celebrating their successes. Through my conversations with Mrs. Ryan, she tells about the positive energy that the kids create supporting one another. Mrs. Ryan supports this teamwork within her classroom that is such a great way to learn. Mrs. Ryan leads by example and the kids follow her. Mrs. Ryan. Sarah Ryan. For the Cleveland Elementary School, Christina Bishnaw, 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 thank you. And she's not here this evening. Janet Palladino. <laughs> Joy Huey. <laughs> Mary Wesley. Susan Kaduff, did I say that right? Kilda, all right, I'll get it right next time. And Lawrence Smith. Christina Bishna, there are some individuals who you just know are meant to be teachers, and Christina Bishna is one of them. My child has had the privilege to have had Ms. Bernard as a teacher in both first grade and third grade. To say that my daughter has enjoyed Ms. Bernard is an understatement. Christina is a great communicator with the parents. She emails a weekly newsletter that provides a synopsis of the week's learning activities, a photo of the kids, and a schedule of upcoming important dates. She is always quick to respond to an email and offer her help in any way possible. Christina volunteered to move from the third grade, from the to move from to the third grade from the first grade due to a large class size, the need for an extra teacher. The amount for prep work involved in changing grades must be tremendous, and she was so eager and excited to do so in order to help with the class size. I forgot her name. Christina Bishnaw, sorry. <laughs> Janet Palladino. 
At a time in life where there are so many pressures on students and teachers to perform, Mrs. Palladino knows that social emotional needs needs to come first. She honestly values the well-being of her entire class. Nova Public Schools is extremely lucky to have Mrs. Palladino. We feel truly blessed to have our child in her class. Our daughter struggled in entering third grade. She was extremely nervous, kind of like I am right now, <laughs> and timid student who did not have much confidence in herself as a learner. Mrs. Palladino took the time to get to know her. She helped her to stop believing in herself as a student. She made her comfortable enough to make risks in her schoolwork, which increased her confidence daily. And in summary, we quote from our favorite third grader, I love Mrs. Palladino. I only wish she could move to the fourth grade next year. <laughs> And we all know um, our next nominee, Joy Huey. And I'm not going to say it because the person who wrote this did. I understand that Miss Huey won the Teacher of the Day last year and that she cannot win again. <laughs> However, she absolutely deserves to still be nominated. I, full, I fully see why she was last year's winner. Mrs. Huey is a phenomenon. She is one of the strongest teachers I've met and I am happy that she is, in my son, she is my son's teacher this year in second grade. Mrs. Shuey goes above and beyond on a daily basis. Her lessons are thorough and developmentally appropriate on all levels. She understands different learning styles and tailors her the lessons to meet the needs of each of her students. Mrs. Shuey. <laughs> Mary Wesley. We've been blessed and lucky to have Mary Wesley for two years, last year with my son and this year with my daughter. Many Wesleys, Mary Wesley has dedicated to her, is dedicated to her class. I have seen that firsthand. My son's MCAS scores went up 96% with Mrs. Wesley, and she made a child who hated to write change to love it, and with her fun costumes and writing assignments that she's assigned. I can say the same with my daughter who struggles in reading. Miss Wesley has made sure that she's getting the help she needs during her very hectic day. She is taking time out to always check in with her. She follows the tricks of her, old, her new specialist in teaching her. She makes my daughter feel comfortable and confident in her schoolwork. Mary Wesley. <laughs> Susan Kilduff. Again, all right. Susan Kilduff made learning fun. She came in early fr every Friday for kids who needed extra help. She made every child feel special, never failing to praise about her singing and writing, never failing to praise about our daughter's singing and writing talents, making her feel proud. I don't know how we would have survived that year without her. Mrs. Kilduff is why, despite challenges that our daughter has, she adores going to school, never, want to sum never wanted summer to come, and still misses her this year. She's a very special teacher and a, person to our, and a special person to our family and to all the kids lucky enough to have her. Mrs. Kilduff. <laughs> Lauren Smith is a music teacher for the Balch um, in the Cleveland School and also uh, does lessons at the middle school. Is that correct? OK. Uh, I'm going to read the quote that was set in this here, and um, it was a quote from President Gerald Ford. And by the way, he didn't nominate you. But, um, <laughs> he's not here with us anymore, so he couldn't have. <laughs> Music education opens doors that help children pass from school into the world around them, a world of work, culture, intellectual activity, and human involvement. The future of our nation depends on providing our children with a complete education that includes music. Um, after three years, what this person wrote here is, after three years of playing the flute, my son came home at the end of sixth grade and announced he wanted to play the tuba. Mr. Smith had worked with my son in the elementary honor band, and I reached out to him to see how one goes about learning to play the tuba. Not to mention, where does one get a tuba? <laughs> Mr. Smith gave my son lessons every week that summer to get him ready to perform with the Coakley Band in the fall. This gave my son enough confidence to try out for the jazz band as well. Currently, in eighth grade, my son now plays tuba in the Coakley Band, the Coakley Honor Band, the Coakley Jazz Band, and the high school marching band. 
I don't think I fully appreciated the, um, the magic of what a teacher could do until I witnessed a transformation that the child could make after one year not being able to play a single note on an instrument and the next year being that same child standing on the field as part of a championship marching band. That's just amazing right there. There are many students throughout the town of Norwood who have similar stories to share because of the interest Mr. Smith took in them and helping them to develop their musical ability. <coughs> Mr. Smith. You. you know, it's really hard to follow some of these, so. <laughs> so our guest speaker, Raina Friedman. Raina is a fifth grade teacher at the Jordan Jackson Elementary School in Mansfield. We still let her come into Norwood. As well as the current president of MassQ, a statewide organization that advocates for effectively integrating technology in education. By the way, from a whole technology standpoint, I'm a scoutmaster, and we've always been the kind of like, leave your electronics at home. I'm going to an event this summer that's going to have 45,000 teenagers. <laughs> Every one of them better have a phone with them, so, <laughs> so I'm, I'm working that issue. MassQ's mission is to educate, connect, and inspire the educational community. She has presented at MassQ's annual conference since 2010. She is a Google Level 2 certified educator, a BrainPop certified educator, Flipgrid ambassador, FableVision ambassador, and a Wakalette ambassador. And we're pleased she's here tonight. Please welcome Raina Friedman. Good evening. I'm Raina Friedman, MassQ president and fifth grade teacher who has not left the classroom yet, and I don't see myself leaving anytime soon. Finding ways to lead beyond your title can be challenging, but each educator here in attendance has found a way to do just that. Congratulations to all the 2019 Norwood Teacher of the Year nominees. As the 2011 Teacher of the Year from the Chamber of Commerce, I humbly can tell you I know firsthand the hard work and dedication it takes for you to get here this evening. In reading the various nominations, I learned that there are Nord educators who take risks for the benefits of their students. They see their students as creators and provide opportunities for them to engage in authentic learning experiences. You recognize that your students need to be part of a community and help them seek their own answers, offering innovative activities, clubs, and projects that extend way past your school day. You've provided flexible seating, offered your time to get to know the whole child, and built relationships with not only your students, but also parents and colleagues. You should be proud of the work you continue to do. As president of MassQ, I am fortunate enough to have built a network of educators who believe in the power of our tagline, educate, connect, and inspire. I have seen your teachers at our own conference and one earned a grant for her work in 2017 for a library makerspace. You have forward-thinking educators in your district and I hope many of you will see what MassQ has to offer you beyond the fall conference such as professional development, special interest groups, $3,000 classroom grants, scholarships to our events, and a family of like-minded educators who work diligently for our end users, our amazing students. It is too hard for all of us to keep up with the technology coming our way. Our kids need to learn how to communicate clearly through speaking and writing, solve problems, and think creatively and critically. They need to be unafraid of the new technology while understanding the importance of data privacy and security. Let them figure out if they even need to say, OK, Google, or hey, Alexa, to get some answers. Our kids actually will be sitting in offices someday with no keyboards. Think long and hard about what brought you here this evening, and then go out there and talk to educators in your hallways, administrators who support you, your professional learning network, and your students. They deserve that. In 2000, when I began my career, I did not expect to have a home in an online space, yet Twitter is where I go to run ideas off people. I did not think students, nor I, would be blogging, podcasting, vlogging, curating or creating websites. Collaborating on the same doc was not even an idea yet. We had no Google. 
Everything is changing around us, so we need to change with it. The candidates tonight are taking that leap, and you can help others possibly take that leap with you. A good friend, Brian McCann, said, I am not asking for permission to be awesome, and I'm not apologizing for being passionate. I would like to add to his sentiment, and I'll forgive myself when I take a risk and it fails, because we get better that way. We are truly awesome and passionate together. Things are changing. We are changing together. Our students will benefit from all we have to offer them. Share your gifts, build relationships, change the world, and remember, have fun and laugh a lot. Thank you for your time this evening and providing me the honor of speaking to you and to the Orient Lodge of Masons for inviting me this evening. Okay, so this is where we have a little fun and you have to talk to each other, okay? So, you, you know the old deal. Who's got, who's got the nearest birthday to today at your table? So have a discussion, have a discussion. I'll give you 15 seconds. Who's got the nearest? You figure out what the measurement is. Okay. Uh, we're close, we're close, we're close. Okay, nope, 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 nope. I, I see people, no. You are given a task, please don't go beyond the task. Come on, you're a teacher, you get this deal. Okay, so that person at each table, raise your hand. Raise your hand, come on. That person at each table, raise your hand. I don't see a hand at this table over there. They need to come to an agreement. There you go. Okay, it is the, the third person to your right. Come on, it's May 3rd. It's May 3rd. So each each of you each of you will get a survey by the way. E each of you will get a survey after tonight. You can tell me what you thought of that process. Our next presenter is Siobhan Bernizer. Siobhan, 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 stop talking to your husband. Come on, come on, down here, come on, come on. Siobhan, how are you? Great. All right, so I'm going to, sorry, I don't need this really, I'm very loud. I'm going to read from the Balch, the Old Ham, and the Prescott, okay? From the Balch, where you at? I have Kimberly Duffy. <laughs> and Sandy Qualter. Okay. Miss Duffy has gone above and beyond. She has implemented a daily behavior system for my son with happy meh and frowny faces to monitor his day. I feel meh all the time. I love that. Her patience and kindness are inspirational. Where others would have thrown in the towel, she has fought tooth and nail to make him the best child he can be. That's for Miss Duffy. Thank you. All right, Ms. Qualter. Ms. Qualter is one of those unique teachers who is able to connect to her students by helping them feel cared for and respected. They are held to high standards of behavior and acts of kindness witnessed by Ms. Qualter. Our acts of kindness witnessed by Ms. Qualter are celebrated and reinforced by the bucket filler certificates she gives to students whom she feels go above and beyond to help others. Thank you, Ms. Qualter. Hot mic. 
All right, from the old ham. That's over there. Elena Lawrence. <laughs> Carrie Pritchard, stay right there, Marsha. <laughs> Lindsay Myers Bertoni. <laughs> Megan Shiloh. And uh, Stephanie Andrews. Miss right. Lawrence's love of music is infectious. Our daughter was thrilled to win a Halloween challenge and be featured on Miss Lawrence's YouTube channel. That's amazing. She has reached out many times to check in on our daughter, and it is obvious she knows her well. It is very impressive that a specialist who teaches scores of students across the elementary system is so connected and invested. Thank you, Ms. Lawrence. <laughs> Carrie Pritchard. Carrie Pritchard is a wonderful teacher that makes our child's every day an adventure. Her care and concern reflect true dedication to changing lives for the better. Thank you, Ms. Pritchard. <laughs> Ms. Bertoni. Ms. Bertoni makes learning fun for her students and teaches her lessons so that they are able to meet each child's individual needs. The students learn through activities that work on sharing and taking turns, conversational skills, and other social skills. This has been such a success for her students to learn the social skills they need in life and it teaches the typical peers compassion and how to be a good friend to kids that don't learn like they do. Thank you, Mrs. Bertoni. Mrs. Shiloh. Mrs. Shiloh has been a perfect match for our daughter this year. School had become a hard place, and th this past year with Ms. Shiloh, it has become the place she loves. Ms. Shiloh provided a safe space for our daughter to learn and move and think in the ways that work for her. She comes home talking about all the great books she has read at school and how much she loves her literature circles. Thank you, Ms. Shiloh. Mrs. Andrews. Mrs. Andrews has helped my daughter learn to truly, wait, learn to truly read by giving her different reading strategies. I don't know what this is, but I love it. Chunky Monkey <laughs> and Flippy Dolphin. <laughs> Mrs. Andrews is a loving, creative teacher who always, who has such a tough class this year, shows true class all the way. Thank you, Mrs. Andrews. <laughs> Okay, and I have four from the Prescott. Um, Elizabeth Healy. <laughs> Janice Elbach. <laughs> Jillian Leonard Bully. <laughs> and Nikki Orfanos. Mrs. Healy has a way of inspiring each student in her classroom to do their personal best. If a student gets a poor grade on a test, she spends extra time with the student making sure that they understand the concepts. She tells them not to worry about the test grade because it's more important that they understand the material than the grade on the test. This is a great morale booster for the students and helps them to move on from test scores and continue learning. Thank you, Mrs. Healy. Mrs. Elbach. Mrs. Elbach's classroom has been a perfect match for our son. And I know we're not the only ones. When we told our neighbor who our first grade teacher was at the beginning of the year, they exclaimed, oh, we love Mrs. Elbach. We will <laughs> never be able to express in words how much her patience and sense of humor have made such a difference in our son's confidence. Thank you, Ms. Elbach. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Bully. As an insightful educator, Mrs. Bully recognizes early on when a student is struggling in her class and takes steps to give the students extra help. Mrs. Bully has a love for yoga and teaches a weekly enrichment class, which the students love and has helped my son by teaching him some breathing exercises, which help him overcome his anxiety. Thank you, Ms. Bully. <laughs> I 
and Mrs. Orfanos. Mrs. Orfanos has an approach that welcomes students into the arts, even if they don't believe that they are an artist. She brings out the creative side in her students and encourages them to explore their own creativity in ways that are welcoming and reaffirming to their own skill sets. Thank you, Ms. Orfanos. So the, the next presentation is an interesting one. Um, early on in the process, a bunch of us got a call from Chris saying, we got a nominee and it's not a teacher. My response was, I think they love him. <laughs> we should recognize him. So, so Chris came up with the whole process. So Jack, come on up. I know you know all about this stuff. I'll do the talking. So Jack Tolman is an incredible asset to the Norwood Public Schools. He is one of the kindest, most patient, efficient, and hardworking people I have ever worked with. It is hard to understand how someone whose job is entirely based on technology never seems to get flustered or stressed. I'm technology. I can tell you. And he knows the secret. You shut it off. <laughs> So Mr. Tolman is always so genuinely excited and proud to showcase all the positive things going on in the public schools. And I realize each of you know the best we can do is get the best out of everyone. Anytime I ever have been in touch with him about an event, he shows, shows such genuine interest and cannot wait to share it with everyone. He also comes to the schools sometimes to interview teachers who get scared to death to put them on various clips and all those most teachers are terrified to be put on camera let, let me preface that most people are terrified to be put on camera so he is always so patient and understanding he makes a nerve-wracking situation so much easier for everyone plus he will do anything anyone asks him to do he'll put, he put together a video for read across america week over a weekend out of his own free time when i had initially emailed him about it he immediately came down to the middle school same day to put together a plan. He dropped everything just to come down and help us out. In addition, every year for field day at the Coakley, he would set up the speaker system for the day. He would arrive at the school early with all the equipment, figure out how to get the extension cords wired for the field, test the microphone, make sure it worked with the iPad, and have everything set and ready to go. And, and I know the same thing. You can never trust this stuff, you know? So, plus there have been a few times when he has had to come back to the school to fix a speaker a couple of hours later. And as, as is always his nature, he comes back immediately with a smile on, a fa on his face and pays such patience and understanding. At the high school, Mr. Tolman helps to maintain and fix all of the projectors. We don't break them, they just break. And, <laughs> and even has a new Friday NPS news clip. Perhaps most noteworthy, he is the main reason so much NOAA history has been documented, including the NOAA High Athletic Field of Fame. Rumor has it, George Yusevich has said, Jack Tolman is his best hire. George, George don't compliment a lot of people. <laughs> Mr. Tolman is the behind the scenes, is behind the scenes both literally and figuratively for almost every event for the students and teachers. His sincere, patient, and kind spirit is truly one of a kind, and the public schools of Norwood are so incredibly lucky to have him. Round of applause. Nominations will be made, Marshall. You you have somebody else to hand out the certificates, right? Because you've been doing it. And <laughs> Thank you, Quentin. So. 
All right, before I start, I have a couple of uh, observations I've made throughout the night. Uh, the first thing I was going to do is declare like a little five minute break to have people refresh their drinks, except you've done a wonderful job of almost killing the bar. Uh, you teachers know how to party, and so I'm sure that whatever happens after this event tonight is going to be a lot of fun. Um, the, uh, the second thing is, um, I, uh, as the guy that has been sort of running around handing these things out, I really want to congratulate you on your wonderful job in seating and clusters. Uh, that let me not move around too much. Uh, you know, I am the guy that can sweat through a suit jacket if I have to run around too much, so I, so I appreciate that. Uh, so, um, uh, so I think we're going to try and blow through this to get through the, you know, to the end of the night in the award and, and move on from there. Uh, so I have the honor of reading the nominees from Coakley Middle School and Norwood High School. Uh, I'm going to apologize in advance if I mess up your name. You'll notice that uh, they don't even introduce me by my last name because I have one of those unpronounceable last names. And so uh, if I mess this up, I feel you. <laughs> exactly. See, no one even knows. Uh, uh, so uh, without further ado, from Coakley Middle School, uh, we have Donna Castillo. Who, who may not be here? Uh, James Ty. Did I get that right? Julie Byates. It's going to get worse. Carrie Silva. Melissa Levitt. <laughs> Michael McCarthy. <laughs> Rachel Siegel. <laughs> Ravi Sangha. Famous Scannell, and Walter Chambers, Walter, Walter also. Um, all right, so I'm going to go through these. Uh, these are a few expert, uh, excerpts from the nomination letters recognizing the impact these wonderful teachers have had on our kids, uh, frankly, during their most awkward ages. Uh, I, I find, I, you know, my oldest is now a middle schooler. Whoa. All right, so with that, uh, my daughter recently saw Ms. Castillo at Foreign Language Night at the high school. My daughter went right over her, to her and gave her a hug. I can see the depth of the connection she has with Ms. Castillo. As a mother, this warms my heart. We all want our children to be loved and cared for at school, and it's clear to me that mine is by this teacher. Mr. Tai is extremely funny, but can still teach the class. <laughs> Middle school years are challenging for everyone. We're lucky to have Mr. Tai to help our children meet those challenges and make the educational experience more fun, interesting, and valuable. Mr. Tai. <laughs> Julie Byates constantly works to improve the student's experience in her classroom and remains innovative and adaptable to meet her students' needs. This year, she initiated a fundraiser and fully funded a project in her classroom to offer flexible classroom seating, such as yoga balls, standing desk, lap desk, and even beach chairs. I noticed no trampolines. <laughs> a round of applause for Julie, please. Carrie Silva is consistently trying out new teaching methods and exploring new content in her classroom. Carrie's also taken a visible stand against vaping, creating the periodic table of vaping for all three grade eight science rooms to help educate students about the dangers. So you uh, lower school people know what you have coming for you, right? Vaping in middle school. Uh, round of applause for Carrie, please. I 
I met Ms. Levitt last year when she stepped up to be one of the yearbook coordinators. After taking on the task of coordinating students, deadlines, software printing, and all the logistics to pull together the yearbook, she offered to do it again this year. <laughs> Having the yearbook created by students makes it so much more special. Ms. Levitt. Mr. McCarthy is a math teacher who uses creativity and a unique down-to-earth approach to teach algebra to middle school students. A student says, Mr. McCarthy is lit! <laughs> Whatever that means. He made math fun and all the lessons interesting. Mr. McCarthy. I know, is that a vaping reference? I don't know. <laughs> Rachel Siegel is a fully committed member at Coakley Middle School. Here is a list of the programs that she runs, several without compensation. Student Council, Coakley Coaches, PBAS Team, Social Emotional Learning Team, Bowling Club, and so many more. Her work as a leader for Student Council has led to Spirit Days, community service projects, and special events. And did I mention she organizes Field Day? I can only imagine. Sweaty seventh graders? Oh. Everyone, uh, Ms. Siegel, please. <laughs> Mr. Senga's talent at breaking down the problems, his personable nature with the students, and his patience with my daughter when she had a lot of questions or needed extra coaching, all combined have helped her become more confident in her own math skills. She even admitted one night while doing her homework, I guess math is kind of fun. <laughs> Mr. Sangha. <laughs> Tamis Scannell is an innovator in the area of foreign language instruction and is shared at school-wide professional development meetings and run workshops for staff. Outside the classroom, Tamis provides translation in both Spanish and Portuguese for families that come to the Kofi Middle School and is the faculty advisor for the CMS GSA Club and the dance team. Thank you. Outside of the school day, Mr. Chambers also plays a positive role for many students. He runs the school-wide after-school program, creating a safe and supportive place that students can complete homework. He also runs our new, newly created mentor program for at-risk students. He works weekly with a group of young men on developing goals, overcoming adversity, and helping them to achieve both academically and socially. Thank you, Mr. Chambers. All right, uh, last school from Norwood High School. Uh, Caitlin Notebart. Notabart. Christine Larea. Did I get that? All right, this one. Uh, Jeffrey Loya. Loja, Loja, Loja. Jennifer Orlinski. Kate Danner. Maybe not here. Michael Crowley. Molly Uppencamp. and Philip Bueller. We're, we're all that old. Mrs. N has provided the nicest environment I've ever felt at school as well as helping me with my work and anything else I've ever needed. She helps people by individually talking to them about learning and how she wants you to succeed. Mrs. N makes me want to work hard because of how amazing a person she is, and she deserves it. Mrs. Notabart. <laughs> Ms. Larea is an inspiration to her students who struggle with the daily expectations of academics and social-emotional coping skills necessary for school success. 
She needs to advocate for her students with teachers who may or may not understand their hidden disabilities as they participate in academic classes. What an amazing way to uh, help those kids out. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Loja is a tremendous teacher who is extremely dedicated to his students. I've never had a teacher who cares more about his students and wants them to succeed. He has around 80 students in his AP US history classes and still manages to make time to meticulously go through their work and provide insightful advice on how to improve it. Mr. Loja. <laughs> Mrs. Orlinski has been one of the most influential people in my life. She helped me grow as a person, make important life decisions while I was in high school, and today, three years after graduating, She's guided me to my desired career path, helped me choose what college I was going to, and talked to me while I was stressed and upset. <laughs> Ms. Danner keeps the mood in the classroom light and friendly with things like Terrible Joke Tuesday. <laughs> it's when people are invited to have fun and share jokes. I hope they're funnier than I am. Uh, math has never been my favorite subject, but I honestly look forward to going to Ms. Danner's class every day because of the positive atmosphere, and I feel more comfortable than I ever have with my math skills. Thank you, Ms. Danner. Uh, this person writes, I would like to nominate Dr. Crowley. My son first took his intro to tech class in ninth grade. He was the reason my son stood a little taller and minded going to school a little less. Bringing the students to UTI to excite them about moving on to the field of technology was also a great experience. Thank you, Dr. Crowley. <laughs> Molly Uppencamp has been a tremendous partner in the mission of voter service and education, embodying the statement, democracy is not a spectator sport. <laughs> Arming students both with active voter registration and the civics background helps them become informed, engaged citizens of this country. Yeah. Thank you, Molly. <laughs> and last but not least, Mr. Bueller is a very kind and hardworking teacher who cares about his students and wants them to do great. He always finds a way to make class fun and does a great job of helping us all understand what we are learning. Yeah. So somebody just said to me, how are we going to finish this? So here's what I want you to do. Look across the other teachers at your table and out loud say, you deserve to be a winner. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> there you go. Excellent. <laughs> so does Joy have the envelope? You do have the envelope. So Joy Huey, come on up here, come on up here. Yes, ma'am. So I would like to tell you that this is an easy process and, and among the Masons, we just bang our heads on the walls because we, we really wish we could give each and every one of you more than we do because you give so much more back to us and to all of our children. Oh, here you go. I always have spares. <laughs> so, so Joy's going to open the envelope, and uh, we'll have the Worshipful Master up here and accompany her during the actual announcement. Drum roll, please. Can I just say a few words? You I just wanted to, want. I, I just wrote a couple of words point. down. I'm I promise I will be short, but I'm not very good at speaking in front of loud crowds like this. Put me in front of a class and I'm fine, but this, so I wrote just a couple of things down and I just wanted to, you know, recognize Dr. Thompson and um, school administrators and members of the school committee and all the friends and families that are here. 
um, supporting all these outstanding educators. And I also wanna thank the Masons for another wonderful event. You have always supported the Norwood schools, the teachers, their families, and your support and generosity is truly appreciated. And <laughs> And I just wanted to say that I'm so proud and honored to be a part of this amazing group of educators, just listening to all the stories and the anecdotes and the examples of just like the caring, creative, innovative teaching that goes on. Um, it just truly shows what a dedicated group of professionals we here, have here in the town of Norwood for the Norwood schools. Um, you guys always show this year after year and your colleagues as well, so really. Um, it's just amazing, and you should all just be so proud of your accomplishments and um, always know that the work you do just um, touches the lives of all these children and can just never be matched by any, anyone or anything. So uh, you give your heart, your soul to your profession. You wouldn't have it any other way because you truly care about children, their education, um, their emotional growth, and you just want to see them go forward and be successful not only in school but just in life and just be good human beings and that's what you all do with your wonderful work every day so congratulations to everyone and um you all deserve to be nominated so here we go she doesn't know by the way do i read it or yeah. do you guys you read it, read it. oh okay you okay so, um, representing the Dr. Philip O. Coakley Middle School, the 2019 Norwood Teacher of the Year is Rachel Siegel. Yeah. we wanted to say something, right? Thank you. I have no idea what to say, but really sitting here listening to everything that everyone does is so inspiring and I love teaching here and I love my colleagues so much and one of them wrote it for me and um, I really don't know what to say, but I just could not feel more surprised, honestly. And I really appreciate it, and I love teaching in Norwood so much. There is no place else I would ever want to teach. It's the best school district out there is. We have the best teachers, and thank you, and thank you to the Masons. I've been here before to support colleagues, and this means so much. Just such a positive and inspiring night. So thank you, and thank you to our amazing principal. We've had a few, <laughs> but she really is the best one we have ever had. And I really mean that. So thank you. Thank you. So before I, I, I stick around, we're gonna have a picture taken. Uh, we'd like to have your principal come up to be in the photo. Dave, you get to be in the picture. Come on, buddy. And uh, just, just to make sure, we, I was told Carolyn Robbins, the principal from the Willet, is here. So, I would get in front, of, in front of the podium. In front of the podium, there you go. Wait a second, where's David? David, you're supposed to be, we're not gonna Photoshop you in. <laughs>
So again, congratulations to everyone. You, you, I, I was serious. You will receive a survey. Please let us know what you thought about the evening. And I'm happy to say it's 10, 10 minutes of 8. School is dismissed. <laughs>